Here's a nice Pioneer graphic uh, analyzer, uh, GR777. This one was uh, been really badly beaten in. Uh, most of the controls have been uh, kicked in or something uh, and not working and pushed right in. Whether or not it can be repaired or not, um, not sure. But if it is uh, repairable, um, apparently they're a nice display, twin dis fluorescent displays and a good specification. You can get the spec online, the center frequencies, very low noise, of course. And um, apparently uh, it looks nice when it's running. So I've got to take it apart. Uh, it shows you um, the case and all the uh, switch panel here. Uh, looks like a bit of a fiddle. Hopefully um, it is repairable. So it's just a matter of taking it apart and looking inside. When you buy a second-hand piece of electronic or electrical equipment off eBay or anywhere, don't assume that the, the person who owned it before you looked after it and treated it well. Uh, first of all, always check the plug. Normally they're quite old. Uh, but anyway, look at this plug on this thing. Uh, taking it off. <laughs> The wires have been completely pulled out and uh, they could virtually sh uh, short out if you plug that in, uh, maybe. Anyway, look at those bare wires on there and this one's pulled out anyway so it wouldn't work. But I mean they could be pulled out and shorted out, anything. So always check the plug before you plug it in. Well, I've taken it apart to get to the uh, front panel, I've taken out a lot of screws and you have to unclip uh, these little uh, plastic parts from the metal frame. So I hope it's going to go back together again. I didn't want to uh, take all these um, connectors off which are press fit and then uh, clipped in. Uh, they're not actually connectors, the wires go in in case uh, I've got some problems putting them back in. Oh, it's left them connected anyway. Anyway, here's the problem. Uh, here are all the uh, actuating uh, plastic parts down here. Now, th these are all um, made in one big strip on some sort of machine. Uh, and then the center parts are glued or, well, plastic welded to the front panel uh, with these here. And then the the little join plastic joins are, are what gives it the uh, flexibility now the problem is um if someone kicks it with their foot or something they this one broke off and not only did the uh, the whole thing break off the little end part has fallen off as well and that that uh we've now got the um the actuating knob uh, little uh, pivots they see they pivot there and then they pivot backwards and forwards on these uh, little press button switches a whole row of them um, now I've put a bit of rubber in there because there's no way you can repair this uh, because the plastic little joining part is so thin and this bit's gone anyway what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put that piece of stiff rubber in and when I reassemble it I'm going to put a bit of glue on the end of that and it's just going to stick <laughs> between these two activators. Now that would be done when it's back together because I've got to stick it in from the front and that will hold it in position. Now one good thing about this is that you can get a remote for this and control all these uh, uh, equalize uh, frequencies from the remote so as long as uh, this is this one doesn't have the remote you can still buy amazingly um, so if we can get these in position so it looks all right it, it, it can still operate some from the remote now uh, down this end um, where they're also the whole the things come un, uh, unwelded but they haven't actually broken off, so I'm going to super glue some of them back on. Though uh, some of these are a bit bent out of shape where they've been punched from the front. So 
again, if they're uh, badly out of shape, I might have to fit a little bit of um, this rubber strip I've got here, which is quite handy. Uh, I can cut it off here. It's adhesive. It's quite. Um, it's this rubber strip is quite uh, firm, uh, dense, and um, it's quite useful for uh, repairing things. Anyway, so uh, I've got to super glue this back in this one and um, try and straighten these up. Hopefully they won't snap off. The connections are so fine. I think uh, I think they uh, might break. And then uh, and then try and put it back together again. There's a little fluorescent display, and um, okay, let's see how it works out. Well, I've super glued these uh, all these loose parts that were holding the uh, little switches in place. Been very very careful. Obviously, that super glue doesn't run onto the front panel, so I've been very very careful with a little bit of super glue, and. Uh, and then some activator. So these are all um, stuck down now. Um, on this side, uh, I've got that bit of rubber on that one and I've stuck it with some uh, flexible, uh, uh, this stuff actually, some uh, shoe goo. Uh, put some flexible on the side of the rubber to hold it onto the face so it doesn't fall out. And this one was about to fall out as well, so I've reinforced it with a bit of uh, of rubber, firm rubber. Um, I hope when I put the panel back on, it pushes these switches into position because they're not all um, level on the front of the panel now. Uh, they're um, a bit uh, bumpy in and out. I don't know if you can see that at all. But um, at least they're not falling out or push right in now. So I'll let that uh, dry uh, thoroughly and then um, we reassemble uh, this panel back on and hopefully um, at least it'll look uh, better and hopefully work as well. I've just realised that something else wrong with this amp. Uh, <laughs> the three knobs that go in here are missing. It's like they've been broken off. You press in uh, little uh, activation switches. Oh, so they're missing and <laughs> broken off. So now I've got to try and find a knob or something that stick in there. Uh, there's very little uh, space behind between the switch and the fascia. So anything that has, goes in there, I uh, don't want it to get jammed. So um, that means I've got to take this off again and see what I can put through there. I've made three tiny uh, little switch uh, press knobs out of a little uh, rubber end, uh, a, a metal ring. Oops. And a grub screw screwed in the end to just stop the ring falling off. They have to go in uh, here behind these activate these plastic activating things here, which there are three. And so I'm just going to put them in with some tweezers and um, then reassemble it again. I've temporarily uh, screwed the switch assembly back into the case uh, just to see how, they, how they're sticking out. Uh, they don't look too bad and I've also now turned it on to see if it's working before I screw it all back together again. And both the displays have come on. Um, so I've got a, a tape player which I plugged in the back so we just start that off. Oh yeah, and the displays are working. Got a level here, and then you got the frequency response. But do the switches work? Well, as I said, if they don't, you can get a remote for this. So um, let's just uh, check it out. 
Yeah, that one works. But it goes down anyway. <laughs> Oops, it's gone back up. So, uh, so this was a this was the one that was uh, really badly broken here. Oh, and it works. That's good. I'll just check each one, and then uh, if they're all working, uh, that'd be excellent. So it's all finished now, screwed back together, uh, cleaned it up with the magic Pampas Natural Clean Fragrance Flea. Uh, it's all clean, done the whole front panel. The uh, switches don't look too bad considering uh, they're a bit uneven, but from the front, even these knobs look good. Everything works. Uh, you've got tape monitor, uh, all these things work, and then you've got You can change the, uh, we've got four selected ones that change the graphic. And then you can also reverse it. Go from treble, cut the treble, heavy bass, cuts the bass, vocal, uh, mid range, cut the mid range. And then all, all these, all these work. Or you can go back to flat and then you can switch the equalizer back on. Let's come on off. Switch it off and switch it back on, which is uh, uh, one of these. Um, that one. So, uh, really nice sounding. It's got a very good specification as well 110 dBs because it's working at line level very low distortion, uh, frequency response is m huge. Uh, um, so very useful actually, uh, very useful for playing cassette tapes uh, which tend to lack um, high frequency or sometimes are very badly balanced with too much bass. Uh, you can just um, add a little bit of treble and whatever with this. Anyway, it's all worked out really good and um, it's a really nice uh, clean unit. Here's the re remote for the Pioneer equalizer. Enables you to select your presets or um, the presets uh, that are already in the machine or individuals. So uh, you can turn this on and then select uh, the different uh, ones. And then you can adjust the individual frequencies up and down. Of course it does them on both channels at the same time. You can go back. It's a flat. So all pretty useful and it sounds pretty good. It, it's all analog of course, no digital, so it um, doesn't really mess up the sound.